Muy buenas tardes. Good evening. A todos los ministros, hermanos y hermanas. To all the ministers and brothers and sisters in different congregations. En Escobedo, Nuevo León. There in Escobedo, Nuevo León. Al misionero Miguel. To the missionary Miguel Bermudez Marín in the congregation pastor by the Reverend Francisco Banda. In the place where he is at. Today, Friday, August 4th of this year, 2023. Greetings to everyone who is connected through the satellite Amazonas or the Internet and those that will be hearing on this occasion after the recording of tonight because this will be recorded so that then you can also hear it. So also for them, special greetings. And for those who will also be reading. The subject we have for today, August 4, 2023, Jesus Christ delivering what the enemy bound. Preached on August 12, 2010, in San Luis Potosí, Mexico. He used the scripture of the gospel according to Luke, chapter 13, verse 10 to 17. It was the, script, the scripture used by Brother William in that message. In the message we will be seeing. And let us read in the book of Romans this portion where the Apostle Paul tells us on verse 18 of Romans chapter 8 for I reckon that the sufferings of the, this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us for the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God for the creature was made subject to vanity not willingly but by reason of his he, him who had subjected the same in hope because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God for we know that the whole creature groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now and not only they but ourselves also which have the first fruits of the spirit even we ourselves groan within ourselves waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body you may please be seated Jesus Christ delivering what the enemy bound let us read some portions of the messages where our brother William tells us in this message receiving an unmovable kingdom preached on April 29th of 2012 here in Calle, Puerto Rico. He tells us, now we find that the whole world from since it, it fell the human being in the garden of Eden fell as prisoner in the kingdom of darkness and since the kingdom of darkness is sentenced to disappear notice death was brought by the devil and entered into the human race through the original sin there in the garden of Eden and therefore the human race became mortal but from where did it come from the old serpent which is the devil and Satan. Back then he brought the death to the human race. It is like when a person is choking, he tries to hold on of something. And if there is someone else, if, he, if he's drowning and he, uh, and if he's drowning, he holds on to somebody else and they both drown. And they say, if he's going to have problem, he will have an accident or something like that. They try to take everyone he can with that problem. That's how the devil is. And the children of the wicked one. But the children of God, since they will live eternally with God in the kingdom of God, they try to take with them everyone they can to the kingdom of God. 
through the preaching of the gospel of Christ, so that everyone who hears believes by the faith of Christ being born in their soul, they receive Christ as their Savior and obtain salvation and eternal life. All of that in the dispensation of grace, all of that happened in the dispensation of grace, where the opportunity was given for the people to receive that benefit for which he came for in the first coming, which was fulfilled in Jesus of Nazareth, the fulfillment of the first coming of the Lord, the fulfillment of what in the Old Testament was reflected, typified in that goat, and that then it would be that type and figure would become a reality in Jesus, the perfect Lamb. That time has ended. The time to receive Christ as Savior, wash away the sins in the blood, and to be baptized in His name, and thus to obtain the new birth, that time has already ended. And that is how it is, how both kingdoms are manifested. Those that belong to the kingdom of the darkness, they try to pull over into the uh, kingdom of darkness everyone they can with everything that exists for uh, to lose the human soul. And there are so many things in this world that put God away from the person that the human beings have to have their spiritual eyes open so they will not be contaminated from the things that separate the human being from God and lift their heads to heaven, to God, to seek God and all the things of God which God has for His children on this earth. Further on in this same message, it says, Therefore, for sure, when the divine judgment falls on North America, upon everyone who rejected Christ as Savior, the divine judgment will begin right there on Latin America and the Caribbean, upon each one who have re rejected Christ as only and sufficient Savior. And therefore, the divine judgment upon the kingdom of the darkness begins in that way in this end time and in those days since the resurrection and for the resurrection an earthquake took place that could be the earthquake for the resurrection of the dead in Christ for when Christ rose and the saints of the Old Testament rose with him there an earthquake took place notice this is in the book of the seals where he tells us. But let us go to the ages, a uh, minute, the book of the ages, on page 365. This is in the book of Spanish, it says. We have had a Catholic president, and without a doubt, we have another one. What is there? Nothing except Hebrews 12, 16. The voice of whom shook the earth, But now he had promised, saying, Yet once more, and I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. There he writes Revelation 11, 1 to 5. Once more, God will shake the earth and with it shake everything loose that can be shaken. Then he will re renovate it. Just last March, 1964, that Good Friday earthquake of Alaska shook the whole world through, though we did not unbalance it, 
but God was warning by a world tremor, tremor what he will soon do in, on a great scale. He's going to blast and rock this sin-cursed world. My brother, my sister, and there is only one place that can stand this shake. And he draws a cornerstone. And that place is in the fold of the Lord Jesus. And he writes the eighth age. And I would beseech you while God's mercy is still available to you, that you give your whole life unreservedly to Jesus Christ, who, as the faithful shepherd, will save you and care for you and, and present you faultless and in glory with exceeding great joy. Now notice, while the mercy of God was there, available, which was extended in the time of Brother Branham and also further on and also in the time of the angel of the Lord Jesus Christ, William Soto Santiago. Now remember, the angel of the Lord Jesus Christ was Paul. The angel of the Lord Jesus Christ was Irenaeus Martin Colombo, because they were angel messengers of the Lord to the church. In other words, we can see the scriptures there with multiple fulfillments that we have read and seen, where it's got multiple revelations as well. But notice how he speaks to us about the mercy of God for the last time. And he uh, warns the people that also tells us in the seals that he's on the throne of intercession. Accept him now, for the time will come in which the door will be closed and he will leave the throne of intercession. Well, today, we can now say that that is a reality. And we have been speaking about it. We have been preaching it that he is no longer on the throne of intercession in heaven. The words of the Reverend William Branham, there when he tells us that he beseeched him, I said, I'm beseeching you while the mercy of God still there, accept him. For the time will come in which there will no longer be mercy opportunity. And that opportunity to receive Christ the Savior has ended. It's no more. Now, what's left is to receive the revelation of God through his instrument in the age of the cornerstone so that the wise virgins receive the rapturing faith and the sleeping virgins they may receive the message but to give their lives in the great tribulation they will not receive that rapturing faith since the time for that, for the preparation and thus to obtain that, it, that theophanic body has ended. And for the world, the preaching of the divine judgment that will be falling on this planet Earth, of which they will have no opportunity, and the 144,000 whom will receive Christ in his second coming, for them to enter also through the door of the dispensation of the kingdom. The door where they will enter through is the door that the elect of God are already inside, the wise virgins, who are seeing God face to face, fulfilling what was promised by the Reverend William Branham, that would be the coming of the Son of Man with his angels. And they will give their lives in the Great Tribulation, the 144,000. But after the three and a half years, after the Great Tribulation, they will rise. And they will be the eunuchs in the Millennial Kingdom of the Bride. 
Now notice, in the book of the seals, on page 369, page of the book in Spanish, Page 373 in the Book of the Seal. We recognize we have just a little time, and the bride may go up at any time. At any time, the Lamb may leave the throne of God where the sacrifice lays, and then it's over. There is no more hope for the world. She is finished. Notice at any moment. The Lamb leaves the throne of God where the sacrifice is at. That has already happened. At that time, the earth will begin with its violent constructions, as we read on last Sunday. We cannot say that it ends right there and something begins right away. Everything has an overlap. And all of this, we will be seeing it in a progressive way. At that time, the earth will begin with this violent construction, which will be the, qu the quakes and great shake spasm of earthquake, a great shaking like it was in the, at the resurrection. As Christ rose from the grave, when the saints rise, the same thing will take place. This is the earthquake that Brother William told us that for sure that will be the one of the resurrection. Lord, it could be at any minute. When they said the story of how the wolf is coming, the wolf is coming and nothing came until he arrived. No, he won't come, but yet we're watching for that glad day to arrive. Take your children under your arms. Father, now draw your little lambs to your bosom, granted, and feed them on the word until there is strength, strength for service. Now, our brother William is saying here, don't worry about the earthquake. That will be also the time, not only for the resurrection of the dead in Christ, but also for the transformation the one, for the ones alive in Christ. How will the transformation take place? Would it be all at the same time, same day, or gradually? When we will we see that? We will know it when we are transformed. And we will be speaking of all those things, of those subjects, in other words, of those subjects of the resurrection, the transformation and all, which is what we are speaking about. We have been speaking about that all this time because the tent vision rotates around the rapturing faith and the rapturing faith rotates around the resurrection and transformation. In other words, all those promises, they rotate around the fulfillment of the tent vision. And he says, we will be speaking about those things, those subjects in the tent cathedral. We will be speaking of all those subjects. If he says it will be spoken, it's because there is an instrument, there is a voice where God, through that voice, will be speaking to the people. It will be the voice of God in the great tent cathedral. It will be spoken of the Lamb's Book of Life. Now remember, who showed Daniel? Who showed John? The book of Revelation there, we see John there, and the angel showing him. In Daniel, we see the angel showing him. Is that angel that has access to the book of truth. And consequently, that angel is the one that is in the midst of the church because he is the one that has access to that book. And he says that in the tenth vision, that instrument was there working, the pillar of fire 
who is Christ the Angel of the Covenant and the Angel and Brother Branham as well at certain moments. He says it could be in theophany in some messages that is, we already have the pillar of fire. We have the angel who spoke to Brother Branham. Now notice that angel is being in the midst of the church at all times working. Therefore, he will also be with the instrument. That God in the tenth vision, in the fulfillment of the tenth vision, is using. And if the Lamb's Book of Life will be spoken, then who has access to the Lamb's Book of Life? The angel. Notice. The seven seals will be spoken. We'll also be speaking about the seven seal. There the seven seal will be opened at that time. The whole mystery will also be opened completely. It will be open or it will be preached about the seven trumpets and the seven vials and the seven plagues, the last plagues. All that will be spoken in the activities of the Great Tent Cathedral for the time when that Great Tent Cathedral will be erected and dedicated to God. So notice how all of that is no longer in the future, but it is already a reality. Now notice in the message. That is in the book of quotation, an excerpt on page 88 of the message of the seals. This is for uh, corresponds to the first seal. On paragraph 749, it tells us, the trumpet sounds at the same time as the seals. It's just the same thing. The church age opens. Just the same thing. See? Now a trumpet always denotes war or otherwise political disturbance. The trumpet does. A political disturbance. And that causes war. When you got when you go to get messing in politics and get them all messed up like we got it now, look out. War is at hand. But see, the kingdom still belongs to Satan. On top he writes, the seals, the trumpets, and the vials, the plagues. And here beside the paragraph, he drew two stars of David and he writes, confusion, then comes war. He still got this part in his hand. Because why? It is redeemed by Christ. But he's doing the part of the kinsman redeemer, taking his subject. Only the last one name is put on that book, has already received it and, see, and been sealed away, which has already happened. And he draws a star of David and he writes the name on the book. Now, have you got it? Then he comes from his throne his father's throne, walks forward, take the book out of God's hand from the throne and claim his rights. The first thing he does is call for his bride. There he draws the star of David. Amen. Then, what does he take? He takes his opponent, Satan, binds him and casts him in the fire. There with all his followers. Now, when we get to the trumpet, we'll go back there and pick up each one of them wars and show you that they follow them churches in the Book of the Ages. Remember that in each age, God sent a messenger. Here he tells us, on page 265 of the Book of the Ages, 
According to these verses, Christ is the morning star. The Spirit is making a promise to the chosen ones of the ages of darkness in related to itself and then on the upcoming ages. And he draws a cornerstone and he writes the morning star. As we have mentioned, Jesus identifies himself with the messenger of each age, and he writes the eight messengers. They receive from him the revelation on the word of the word for each age. This word revel re re revelation brings the elect of God out of the world and into full union with Jesus Christ. These messengers are called stars because they shine with a borrowed or reflected light on, of the sun, even Jesus. They also call stars because they are holders of light at night. Thus, in darkness of sin, they bring the light of God to his people. And on page 43. He tells us, here um, uh, is page 45 in the book in Spanish. Forty-three to forty-four, both of pages of, of the book in Spanish. It says, John was in the spirit, and being so, he saw the great and marvelous day of the Lord Jesus and all his holy power. The future was about to unfold, for God was going to teach him. God, John did not say it was a trumpet. It was like a trumpet. Now, when a trumpet is blown, it has an urgency about it. It's like a herald, the king's messenger coming to the people. He blows on a trumpet. It's an urgent call. He writes the messenger of the king. In other books, he also writes, so the other people gather to listen. Israel always assembled by the sounding of the trumpet. Something important is at hand. Listen to it. So this voice had the same urgency as of a trumpet. Clear and strong it was startling and awakening. So in this voice, he draws the star of David. Oh, that we might hear the voice of God as a trumpet this day, for it is the gospel trumpet, sounding forth the word of prophecy to make us aware of and prepare for what is coming upon the earth. Now, He keeps on saying, on page 87, paragraph 749, where we stopped, we teach them how to follow those seals, wars and rumors of wars. But the trumpet denotes distur the religious disturbances, while the seals, seals deal with religious disturbances. See? A seal is open. A message is dropped. And then the church is always so set up in its own political ways and whatever more, and all of its dignitary. And when that real message drops down, that messenger goes forth and he shakes them to pieces. That's right. It's religious disturbance when a seal is opened. And there he writes, the seventh seal, when it is opened publicly, it has a, political, a religious disturbance and the squeeze will come. In other words, all of this that has been said at this end time is going to bring that persecution. That is, 
First will be the squeeze, which will then become a persecution for the rest of the virgins, the foolish virgins, and also the 144,000. That is the squeeze, which is brought forth by the opening of the seventh seal. In other words, you can now be seeing that with the opening of that seventh seal will gradually, you will gradually be seeing how the squeeze will then be more direct directed to, toward the bride or the chosen ones. Notice 750, page 88. Throne. As soon as the Lamb strikes the seal, and what did it reveal? Not all of itself. First, it was it's with God. Next, it's in a symbol. Then it's revealed. Three things, see? It's coming forth from the throne. First, it can't be seen, heard, or nothing. It's sealed up. The Lamb blood paid the price. He thunders when he spoke it out. And when he did, a white horse rider started out, and it still was a symbol. Now watch. He said he would be known in the last days, but he comes forth in a church symbol. Do you understand the church? He becomes forth in a symbol of a church, that they know there is a seal. But just what it is, yet they don't know, because it's a white horse rider, and only is to be revealed at the last days, when this actual seal is broken. And there he draws a star of David. In other words, and here beside, which said they would be known in the last days, there he draws a cornerstone and the ages. Now, let us continue here where we stopped. In the Book of the Ages, also tells us <clears throat> page 52 and 53, it says, But some days those feet of brass will be on earth. And there he writes, Revelation 10, 1 and on, and 19, 11 to 20, and Revelation 11, 3, and 6, 12. That is the sixth seal. And the judge of all the earth, he'll... And with equity and perfection will he ju judge mankind and there will be no evading that judgment no turning of that ju justice there will be no temptation of it he that is unjust will be unjust still he that is filthy will be filthy still the unchanging one will not change then for he never has and never will those feet of brass, he writes, Moses and Elijah, will crush the enemy. Notice there that second part, Jesus Christ delivering what the enemy bound, there he delivered on the cross that first portion. He rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of light. And in his second coming, he will deliver us also in the physical part, in this physical body, giving us eternal and glorified body. And how will he be fulfilling that? Notice, those feet of brass will crush the enemy. He's lost his thing on, on the cross, the devil did. Now notice how in his second coming here tells us that those feet of brass will be on the earth. And those, there will be those ministers of Moses and Elijah will break to pieces the kingdom of the darkness, the kingdom of the Gentiles, ruled by the devil. 
They will destroy the Antichrist, the beast, and the image, and all that is vile in his sight. He will destroy the church systems that have taken his name only to corrupt his brilliance, brilliance and crush them along with the Antichrist. All the wicked, the atheists, the agnostics, the modernists, the liberals will be there, will all be there. And now we have, I just saw a news that, let us say, is moving around everywhere. Where? It says, a law, or let us say, is something that they will implant that says that the religious liberty ends where the rights of the community begins. Notice how the enemy of God enters, the devil. Bring, he, he comes in to introduce his laws and then more directly to those churches which are against that which is anti-word or anti-word. This is why those feet of brass will destroy everything that has to do with that kingdom of the beast. That is, with everything that comes forth from Rome, from the United States, those laws, all that, the image of the beast, everything will be destroyed by those feet of brass. That is, by those ministries of Moses and Elijah. All, all the wicked, the atheists, the uh, agnostics, the modernists, the liberals will all be there. All the wicked, the death, hell, and grace will be there. Yes, they will. For when he comes, the books will be opened. That is when even the lukewarm church and the five foolish virgins will appear. He will separate the sheep from the goat. Now notice when that uh, lukewarm church appears and is pointed out. And there he also places the foolish virgins. He will separate the sheep from the goats. Who makes the separation? Those ministries. They will make the segregation, the separation from the separation from good and bad. There those ministries are to work that. When he comes, he will take possession of the kingdom because he belongs to him. And with him, the hundreds of Thousands will come, his bride, to come to assist him. Glory. Oh, it's now or never. Repent before it is too late. Wake up from amongst the dead and seek God to be filled with his spirit or you will miss eternal life. Do it now while there is time. That is is what the world is living in its present time. Because that they missed that opportunity of obtaining the opportunity to be born again, thus obtaining a theophanic body and getting prepared for the transformation. That time has ended. Now notice, he goes on to say in the message, God confirming the work of our hands, preach on September 20th, 2014, in Bogota, Colombia, it says. He has already confirmed the first age, the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh age. And now we need the confirma confirmation of the age of the cornerstone. And he will confirm it, fulfilling what he showed the Reverend William Branham, fulfilling the third pool, and giving us the faith to be changed and raptured. Now notice, in 
the book of the ages. On page 369 in this book, it says, Even though he will not be popular, he will indeed be vindicated by God. Just as Jesus vindicated John and the Holy Spirit vindicated Jesus, we may have the trustworthy that this man will be first vindicated by the Spirit, working his life with acts of power that is indisputable and found nowhere else. And Jesus himself, in returning, he writes with Moses and Elijah, there is the feet of brass of judgment will authenticate him even as he authenticated John. John witnessed that Jesus was coming and so will this man. And in John, he writes Elijah. That is the ministry of Elijah in his third manifestation was John. And in his fourth manifestation was the Reverend William Branham. As John out, as John out, uh, witness that Jesus was coming, and so will this man and the return of Moses and Eli will prove that this man truly was the forerunner of his second coming. This is the final evidence that this man is truly the prophet of Malachi 4. Now remember, Malachi 4 also has multiple fulfillment. For Jesus, for the end of the Gentile period, will be Jesus himself appearing. At the end of what? Of the dispensation of the grace. And he says, the last three and a half years of the 1954, that's 54 years, 1954 years, Jesus will appear at the end of the Gentile age. Then it will be too late for those who have rejected him. And he draws a cornerstone and the ages and an arrow toward the cornerstone. In order for now when those ministries appear, then he says it will be too late. He's talking about, he was telling the people to use the opportunity before the door of mercy would be closed. And here he says that when that happened, when the ministers of Moses and I appear, when he says Jesus himself will appear at the end of the Gentile age, then there it would be too late for those who have rejected him. Now notice that how God, know, uh, knowing that it would be a time where the mercy of God would be outside of the throne and would become a throne of judgment for the love of his elect God then sends the ministry of Moses and Elijah he says he brother William says he lived them somewhere he lived the ministers of Moses and Elijah because of that that group will not be denominationalized that is it will not become a denomination And notice that in those ministries, then the church bride would have mercy because it is through those ministries that God would see them. And those who reject them, then they would be rejecting the mercy of God for the last time which is what he told us there on page 359 in the book of the seals or 369, the book of the seals in Spanish. Notice where he says, we have read this paragraph already in many occasions. And this will not be the exception because it is a scripture that is in full fulfillment and then it will reach a part where it will be fully fulfilled. 
Because notice the part where it says, they were in services like this one, there that is being fulfilled. When he says that they said to the rocks and the mountains to hide them from the wrath of him, that lays further on. Now, let us watch the last two verses of those prophets will be there and will do all kinds of miracles they will darken the sun and all those things through that time then they'll cry for the rocks and mountains to hide them see hide them from the word that they had laughed at see that had already happened that was in the past that already had happened Because they see him come. That is a time came where they would see him. They said, hide us from the wrath of the Lamb. He is the word. See, they laughed at the word and here the word was incarnate. They was, and they had made fun of it, laughed at them, made fun of them and The incarnate word had dropped forward. Why didn't they repent? They couldn't. It was too far then. It was too far then. And there is an excerpt which I was reading. Where Brother William tells us there this was in the message live, death, burial and resurrection of the grain of wheat in the new creation preached on July 27, 1975 and we, he says there we hope the rest of that body of that body of believers of that promised son that was to be born that body of believers that would appear, we hope that what is left to be born, what is about to come out of that body of believers come to light so that all this body of believers can receive that Spirit of God that is around the bride, that wife. It is around her. But all those that believe to be the bride, all those that believe to be in the message, they all believe. They all believe, no. They all believe this, no. He will get inside all of them, no. If what he's around is around the bride, the wife that is pregnant, is going around her, but it's not to be inside of her, but to be inside the child that is going to give birth to. And it is the fullness what comes to be inside that child. It's the fullness, and then we're near that. That is why, let us pray much, so that the rest of the body, not the body of the bride, but the body of the Son that the bride has to bring forth, has to appear, has to be manifested as part of that body, so that then the fullness of God can come and all be filled with that fullness. Notice, first, the fullness has to come in that child that is going to be born, for them to come the fullness in the rest of the body. And then the rest will rejoice as well. For imagine, when the rest of that people, when the rest of that people who believe the message begin to see in a group the fullness of God, of the things that God will speak and will do, anyone will rejoice, for they re will recognize, they will realize Because that is what he says. Brother Branham says in the message, the, the invisible union of Christ and his bride. Notice that group, there is a part where he says, wait, on page 256. Notice he said, now last night we saw he was coming with his great sword to kill. And we also seen that he will kill with the sword, the sword of the word, the word of God. It's a two-edged sword. Slay him. Puts him right down. Wait till them seven thunders order their voices 
when, after the seven thunders ordered their voices, which was spoken to us that in Great Ten Cathedral, they will be uttering their voices. Wait. Till them seven thunders order their voices to that group who really, there is a group, who can really take the word of God and put it right. There is where he read Moses and Elijah with the chosen one. Then they will cut and break. They'll be able to close heaven, will do this and that or whatever they want. But then he says that, and then the rest, the rest will rejoice as well. Because imagine, when the rest of that people who believe the message begin to see in a, a small group the fullness of God, the, God that, the things that God will speak and say, they will recognize, they will realize, because that is what Brother Branham says in the message, the invisible union of Christ and his wife, as his bride. He says, when they begin to see things being fulfilled, which were promised with, thus saith the Lord, they will then say, that is the foolish, give us of your oil. See? Not only those from outside, but also those from inside the message, which at the beginning, well, they cannot believe. But we will not bother them also. We will leave them alone so that they do not cross the line. And here is speaking about those from within the message, inside the message. Because the one who inside the message crosses the line, there is no room to turn back. Therefore, we cannot begin to fight or argue with anyone. We should pray for them. And this is not trying to make others believe it. But each one will believe before the Lord that which God allows them to see and believe. Those as God allows them to learn, uh, to believe it as Peter, they will capture it. For this is not for everyone. This is for the predestinated group that God has predestinated. That is, it's by divine election, by predestination. And we leave alone those from inside, as he said, for they are inside also in the message, for they know the message. And not all will believe. We already knew this. It's not to wonder. It's not, it doesn't make us wonder because we leave them alone. It says, for they not to cross the line, for if they cross the line, he says, because the one inside the line crosses the line, there is no room to return. In other words, and I will not be able to do anything for them. The one who crossed the line crossed it. And there is no way to come back. That is, do not expect for someone who have crossed the line to return in the first resurrection. He will come back in the second resurrection, and at the end, if he crossed the line, he will be cast into, into the lake of fire. That is why I always said, and I have also told you, and will repeat, if you do not understand, keep quiet. It's better if you keep quiet. And they knew well the, chast the ja chastisement that await them. They have heard all this. But remember, you will tell them to shut up, and then is when they speak the most, for they are ordained for that. So you must also know these things. They have been in services like this, and they have heard all those things. They knew they were facing the same things those prophets foretold, but they rejected it. They despised the mercy of God for the last time. And when one rejects the mercy, there is nothing left but judgment. Now notice, when you spurn mercy, just think of it. Now notice, when the mercy of God is extended there, Elijah and Moses, the one who receives his, mes receives his message, receives mercy. And that is God's mercy, which is in the midst of the church in this end time. And the one who rejects that mercy, what he receives is judgment. Judgment. 
Now, he goes on to say, I'm in the message, God confirming the work of our hands, the vials, the trumpets, will be preached there, just as the Reverend William Branham preached the seven ages of the church and the seven seals. Even though the seven seal was not open, but it will be open to the public in the age of the cornerstone. Where? In the age of the cornerstone. That is why it's so important to go up higher, above the seventh age. And above the seventh age, what there is, is the age of the cornerstone. That is why the Reverend William Branham says, look up to the, to the upcoming age, the age of the cornerstone, where God is going to be confirming the work of our hands. Now, when he says, look up, he is, notice, in this study, I uh, copied this sheet, this part of the study where he says, let us see if you can see if you can see it where he says it is in this scripture of the gospel according to John chapter 20 verse 1 to 18 notice what he writes here now we will see that scripture but he writes the seventh part he, he writes the seventh stage he puts it as a Friday and on Sunday he puts it up on the cornerstone as eight And where is Saturday? In the center. In other words, in that day, Brother Branham was standing there, carrying out that preparation of forerunning what was coming. Look up. What was the next thing? The Sunday, the eighth day, the age of the cornerstone. And Brother William was also there. And anyone will say, but how? The most holy place was not yet built. It was being built. Therefore, it was the Holy Spirit, the one working at that stage and preparing everything to enter into a new dispensation, the dispensation of the kingdom. And that overlap was taking place there, the dispensational overlap as it happened in the time of John the Forerunner, where after the seventh age, there was a, a space there where the Archangel Gabriel appeared speaking to Mary. Notice, all of that was happening in that time, before the fulfillment of the coming of the Messiah the second coming of the Lord, which is the same coming because the coming of the Lord has two parts, the first part in Jesus and the second part is fulfilled at this end time. First as carrying out his work of redemption and then doing his claiming work. But it's all one coming, but it's divided in two. There you have the duality part, which we will see on Sunday. Now notice how at that time the first coming of the Lord was to be fulfilled there in Jesus. But notice how he appeared in that dispensational overlap from the dispensation of the law to the dispensation of the grace. A forerunner appeared, John the Baptist. Back here appears the forerunner of his second coming, the Reverend William Branham. Gabriel appears, speaking to Mary. Here appears that Archangel Gabriel speaking to the church bride, forerunning as well. And then the Son appears. Now notice that in the life of Brother Branham, everything was reflected in the life of Brother Branham. And notice the manifestation of God in Brother Branham, in the fourth manifestation of Elijah, 
in his fourth manifestation. Elijah in his fourth manifestation. There he showed five occasions of the power, powerful hand of God. And just as he showed in Brother Branham those five manifestations, remember also the first and second pool was fulfilled in the Reverend William Branham. And the third pool, since it is the word being spoken, the third pool is, was also fulfilled in Brother Branham partially. Now, the third pool is for the fulfillment of the tenth vision, which Brother Branham said that that was not yet fulfilled. That is, it wasn't fulfilled in the days of Brother Branham, and in 65 he says, there is something I know that has not yet been fulfilled, and it's a place where I have to enter and pray for the sick. And anyone would say, well, since it wasn't fulfilled, Brother Branham then failed. He hasn't failed. And he has never failed. What the Reverend William Branham spoke. The Reverend William Branham is the forerunner of the second coming of Christ. The coming of the Anointed One. And his message tells us how his coming would be. And his message is what foreruns the second coming of the Lord. Now notice, he tells us in a message that in 1946, there is a book which is the story of my life but that one was related by a person then I find for you the detail but I have written down this part where he says he's reading there brother William in the book brother William has he says the second time that William Branham came to the West was in 1947, when he, by being a pastor, left his church, when the angel of the Lord found him and commissioned him in 1946 to care, carry a supernatural gift in his evangelistical... He returned again to Phoenix, Arizona. This time was to minister the gift in between the Hispanic people. I have this here. I didn't have it, but I, w I wasn't going to read it. Tomorrow we can have it, and then we give all the details. This time was to minister in the gift among the Hispanic people, the majority of Mexican descendants, and he writes Mexican people, who immigrated from Mexico, where he, where did, where he found great answer of faith amongst them toward the gift or first stage of his ministry or first pool of his ministry was in the western part where a great movement will take place in the rest of the country in his early ministry since the angel commissioned him. And he writes, began the first stage, first pool, 1946. Now notice 1946 and... You add 28 years, it adds up to 1974. And you add 28 more and gives you 2002. And you add 28 more and it gives you 2030. And there you can see something there where in that second pool 
also has that fulfillment up to the seventh stage where our brother William placed us. And then in that overlap, in that second pool and on, in which we would fully enter in 2019 to 2020. And we can see how all of that has been fulfilled, the acclamation, the voice of Archangel and Trumpet of God, also in those stages which were represented and reflected in Brother Branham, which God has also fulfilled in the midst of the church with the per with the corresponding people. We see the first, second, and third. And the third is the one that belongs to this end time, where a great tent cathedral would appear in the midst of the church. And Brother Graham spoke about it. We were not going to say this like without having... But we will go on seeing all that. And where we are at because everything will be spoken and open for the seventh seal would be open fully in a great tent cathedral. And that is what God is doing. We are now people, mature or mature people, whom are receiving everything the church needs. When he said, John, leave that alone. Don't write it. I will reveal it when they have the need to know it. When is the need to know it? Now, today, in this end time, before the divine judgments fall of the great tribulation, so that the elect of God are ready to be transformed and raptured. He goes on to say, our brother William, look up. To, uh, to the age coming, the age of the cornerstone or of the cornerstone. That is what Brother Branham says. That is in the quote 311, page 37, paragraph 311. It says, in the last part of that paragraph, look at now look at the age coming now right up to the headstone. See what I mean? The coming of the Lord, the made known. God and all creation is waiting for the church to positionally find its place. And he draws a cornerstone and an arrow toward the cornerstone. And the age toward the cornerstone. And he writes on top of this quote, the age of the cornerstone, the coming of the Lord. He goes on to say, there is where God will be confirming the, the work of our hands. The third pool will be for the church bride, will also be for the foolish virgins, and will also be for the world. Therefore, there will be a manifestation of Christ in Holy Spirit in the midst of His church, which will cover the chosen ones that will be transformed, and all of this to call them and gather them together. Notice, to gather them, that is what we saw with the life of Joseph. He gathered in the barn everything for the years that the famine would come. Notice the work there of Joseph. Notice the work of that ministry today in the age of the cornerstone. And he says there will be a manifestation of Christ in Holy Spirit in the midst of his church, which will cover the chosen ones that will be transformed, and all of this to call them and gather them together. Because as we read, a calling, the sound of a trumpet, is a calling for something. Notice, they are being called and gathered together in the barn in the age of the cornerstone. But we can say the saying of, wait, didn't he call everyone? And he had done all that work? There is a part where he says that you cannot be an evangelist and prophet at the same time because it would be confusion. It will bring confusion to the people. We will find it. I have it somewhere. And he wrote, no evangelist and pastor and no evangelist and prophet at the same time for it would bring confusion. Something like that. 
But indeed, all that gathering was done where there was all kind of fish. But at the end of time, then the, the reaping angels come there, those that would be making that segregation. And notice, it says, and all this to call them and gather them and to give them the faith to be changed and, tra and transformed and raptured. Why does he call them and gather them together? To give them the rapture and faith. And for the foolish virgins to give their life in the great tribulation as martyrs. That is, those ministries will also be for them, working. That manifestation of Christ in Holy Spirit in the midst of the church will also be for the foolish. It will also cover the 144,000. The 144,000 that will go through the Great Tribulation as well. And for the world, not for salvation, but as it was, but as it was in the days of Jesus. When he went to the lower parts of hell, so the world will see something great, a manifestation that will impact the whole mankind. On page 29 in the book of quotation, paragraph 245, it says, I do believe that another shaking is coming, a worldwide shaking. He writes, another shaking is coming, worldwide. <laughs> These things that I told you are the truth. In the judgment day, I will find you there with history, as true as I'm standing here. In the sh world shaking, he draws a, the cornerstone and the ages, and on the shaking, worldwide shaking, an arrow toward the cornerstone. Now, I'm sure you all could see what it is. It's a coming of a greater, deeper anointing of the Holy Spirit. That is what our brother William says, that the third pool will be for the church bride, will be for the foolish virgins, and will also be for the world. Therefore, a manifestation of Christ will take place in Holy Spirit in the midst of his church. See? That is the manifestation of that anointing, the coming of that anointing in the midst of the church, that anointing of the Holy Spirit. He goes on to say, that third pool is going to impact mankind. It will impact the foolish virgins and above all, the wise virgins, which, which are the ones with the greater blessing and which will be carrying out the work of God, that is Christ through his church bride, carrying out the work he has promised for this end time. God in Holy Spirit in his church, Christ in Holy Spirit in his church, carrying out what he promised for this end time. And through his church, working what he promised for this end time. And he confirming the work of our hands. Therefore, in the divine program, we have the place to work in the work of the Lord, in the businesses of, businesses of our Lord Jesus Christ, we should be. Where in the stage pertaining to this age, we will not be working in the age of Laodicea or West Legend or other ages that have passed. We know where we, we have to work, up above the ages, in the age of the cornerstone where the tenth vision will be fulfilled and everything he has said he will carry out in the work of that tenth vision. And there is where we must be working, working in the divine program. doesn't matter in which country you live. Now, there are TV's transmissions, so it will be transmitted. Everything the Reverend William Branham saw in the tenth vision. It will be transmitted to other people, other countries as well, because we have the facilities to do so. Everything that he saw will be transmitted. And what are we doing now? Transmitting everything that is happening in the 10th Cathedral. Notice that everything that was spoken by the Reverend William Branham and our brother William Soto Santiago, how it was spoken, how it's being fulfilled today, all of that, we are seeing it with our own eyes. 
and the third pool will work so powerfully in the work which is and the third pool will work so powerfully in the place that is being fulfilled and also in other countries through the transmissions. That is all that benefit. The other countries also have it. Therefore, it doesn't matter in which place you are at. The important thing is to be working, laboring in that stage of the cornerstone in the program pertaining to this end time. Jesus Christ delivering what the enemy bound. Let us stand up and we thus leave immediately with us our kind friend and brethren, Dr. William Soto Santiago.